So today we're going to be talking about myopia, but not just the refractive component, but the neural op of myopia. And so myopia can cause both afferent and efferent problems in neuroop. And as you know, there are different types of myopia, but one of the ones that's going to affect us is the axial myopia. So the light rays are coming in and have to be refracted, as, as you know, to hit the retina. In an axial myope, their eye is actually bigger. And in fact, it might be weirdly shaped because you have a posterior staphyloma here. So this posterior staphyloma means we're going to have axial myopia. And so instead of the light rays being hitting the retina, they're like in front of the retina because your retina is really back here. And so you need this diverging lens to get the light to hit the retina again. And so the ways this can come to neurop are, number one, if they've had cataract extraction or they've had a refractive procedure, the refraction that's listed on the chart might say minus two, but that's, they had cataract extraction. They were really a minus 11 or LASIK and they were really a minus five or whatever they were. So you can't rely upon the chart sometimes to tell you what the eyeball's axial length is but when we look in the back of the eye, we can see the thinning. And so, of course, the major risk factor in myopia is the development of retinal detachment. So because the retina isn't growing, but the eyeball is, you have 10 gallons of paint, but you have to paint 20 gallons of back of the eye. And so the paint's going to be real thin in some areas. That's going to cause a retinal hole, a tear, and could lead to detachment. Same with trauma in myopes. So we recommend that they be careful with trauma. And so when you're a myope, you're considered a high myope once you're past minus six, and I'm a high myope, I'm a minus seven. And it can progress even after you're done growing, it can still growing. And so you can get numbers like minus 11, or minus 14, or even higher numbers. These are progressive pathologic myopias, and they cause thinning of the back of the eye. And so you can have vision loss that can't be corrected anymore with the glasses because the retina is so thin. And it might cause a choroidal neovascular membrane or a hemorrhage in the macula, a fuchs spot in the, in the macula of a myo. Or uh, you might just lose vision because your retina is just not working anymore because it's so thin. This is progressive pathologic myopia and it has to be a big number. The efferent uh, way this presents is heavy eye. So the eye is too big and normally the muscles are like what you would see in a cross, the superior rectus and the inferior rectus muscles should be basically aligned in the same axis, as well as the lateral rectus and the medial rectus muscle. But when you have heavy eye, the big eye gets displaced superior temporally, and that causes the whole system to shift. So instead of it being a cross, you, you kind of have a distortion. And that's because the eyeball has been pushed up into this segment here. And that we call heavy eye, and it can produce esotropia and hypertropia. And the, the worst version of it is when we have large angle strabismic esotropia, myopic esotropia from a very big eye. So you can imagine you're trying to turn the Queen Mary ocean liner in the port of Galveston. It's going to be hard to turn that ship around in the port. So you really should be turning around out to sea where you have plenty of room. But if you're in the orbit, you're gonna have a hard time turning if the boat's too long. So if the boat's too long, you really can't be turning in the little orbit here. And that's what causes myopic esotropia, which is the most extreme version of the mechanical efferent presentation of high myopia. So you need to know that high myopia shows up in neurop as afferent side, progressive pathologic myopia, posterior staphyloma, or efferent side diplopia from the heavy eye syndrome. And that only happens with big numbers of high myopia.